On October 14, 1947, the world was about to witness something that would change the course of aviation history forever. A young United States Air Force officer and pilot, Charles Edward Chucky Yeager, was preparing to do what many believed was impossible, break the sound barrier. For years, the sound barrier had been considered an impenetrable wall that no aircraft could ever surpass. But Chucky had a plan that was about to shatter that belief. As the news of Chucky's supersonic flight began to spread, people were left scratching their heads. The flight had been nothing short of miraculous, with Chucky reaching speeds of Mach 1 at an altitude of 45,000 feet. It was a moment that would go down in history and inspire a new generation of aircraft engineers to reach for the impossible. However, the speed of sound was not the fastest in the universe, and inventors globally continued to strive for something even faster. After many years of research and development, NASA engineers have developed a few, quote, classified ways to travel at the speed of light. To understand these new developments, we first need to understand what exactly is the speed of light. According to modern science, it is a constant and unalterable value of 300,000 kilometers per second. Only massless entities like photons can reach this speed, while particles like protons and neutrons can approach 98% of the speed of light. This helps us measure how far apart stars and galaxies are and how big the universe is. But trying to reach the speed of light is not only challenging, but also hazardous for humans. As an object gets closer to light speed, its mass increases, which slows the object because it gets heavier. This means energy of the rocket speed would result in making the spaceship heavier, famously known as E equals mc squared. This increase in mass could cause fatal heart problems, and the speed could result in time dilation, where time slows down for those traveling at light speed and speeds up for those who are not. But this means that no object with mass can ever reach the speed of light. Or can it? The highest speed achieved by a spacecraft to date was 364,660 miles per hour by Parker Solar Probe, which is only 0.05% of the speed of light. But this spacecraft wasn't designed to travel at light speeds. Using current technology, even an overly engineered rocket might take centuries to travel to our closest star, Proxima Centauri, which is less than five light years away. In reality, traveling at the speed of light would require a powerful spaceship with an unlimited source of energy. Although finding an unlimited source of energy might be an overstretch for physical laws. Another portion of general relativity predicts that massive objects like stars and galaxies bend the fabric of space-time, causing light to travel in curved paths. This theory has been confirmed through numerous experiments and observations, including the famous solar eclipse experiment in 1919. But here's a catch we still don't know how to manipulate space-time. Or that's what we thought. Something in NASA's secret facility is being engineered to overcome our high-speed desire. Dr. Harold Sonny White and his team at NASA's Advanced Propulsion Laboratory are working on several ways to achieve light speed, including testing space materials in extreme conditions, experimenting with plant life in deep space travel, and studying the effects of time dilation on humans. Every hour we spend on that planet will be seven years back on Earth. A device developed by Eagle Works Lab, known as the White Jude Warp Field Interferometer, will help them see changes in space and time fields. Dr. White has also proposed a design for a spaceship that warps space time like a blanket and propels. Even science fiction movies talk rigorously about bending space time and it has been showcased several times, such as in Interstellar, Star Trek, and Back to the Future franchise. The warping of space-time can make a spaceship move at high speeds. It works similarly to a heavy object placed in the center of a trampoline, causing it to bend. The closer something is to a heavy object, the more momentum it gains and eventually falls into it. The spaceship works similarly to a satellite. A satellite stays in space and doesn't hit the Earth because it is moving fast enough to balance out the pull of gravity. As the satellite falls towards Earth, it also moves forward, so it misses the Earth and falls in a curved path. This continuous falling keeps the satellite in a free-fall state. The spaceship's bubble in space-time keeps it from being impacted by Einstein's theory of relativity. This means it can travel at the speed of light without breaking any laws in the universe. 
This concept could potentially make traveling to a nearby star like Alpha Centauri possible within weeks, even though it is 4.2 light years away, which is trillions of kilometers. In comparison, the NASA German Helios probes only traveled at a speed of 250,000 kilometers per hour, meaning it would take 18,000 years to do the same. But the warping of space-time technology comes with a ton of problems, some of which are accidental black holes or even ripping space-time. Dr. White's lab has been conducting several tests for years, but in the same facility, one space engineer claims to have a better way of light-speed technology. David Burns's helical engine, which is based on the electromagnetic drive, or EM drive. This idea was first proposed by Robert Scheuer in 2001. EM drive is a type of engine that uses microwave to produce thrust. It has a cone-shaped chamber that bounces microwaves back and forth, creating a pattern of waves that pushes the engine forward. Scientists aren't exactly sure how this works, but they think the microwaves especially interact with the chamber to create the thrust. Scheuer claimed to have built a prototype in 2002 that produced a thrust of 0.02 newtons with an 850-watt cavity magnetron. However, the device could only operate for a few seconds before the magnetron overheated and failed, and details of the prototype were never published or replicated. Scheuer claimed that the engine produced thrust in the direction of the base of the cone, but how does it work exactly? Guido Fetter, the founder of Canet LLC, later developed the Canet Drive, based on Scheuer's concept, using a pillbox-shaped cavity. It operates on a similar principle to the EM drive, using microwaves with a resonant cavity to generate thrust. The exact details of Canet's drive design and operation have been kept confidential, with the company stating that they have patented the technology. Surprisingly, there have been no publicly available scientific reports on the performance or validity of the Canet drive. The company has claimed that they have successfully demonstrated the technology and are working on further developments, but there has been limited independent verification of these claims. However, these ideas conflict with the fundamental rule of physics, known as the conservation of momentum. The rule says that when things interact, they can't make a force that moves in only one direction. If an object goes one way, an equal force must go the opposite way. For example, when you shoot a gun, the bullet pushes the gun back with the same amount of force as the bullet was shot forward. This is the principle behind the traditional rockets and is also known as Newton's third law. The problem with the EM drive is that all theories about its working seem to contradict this basic principle of nature. However, Dr. David Burns seems to have discovered a new method. The helical engine is different from the EM drive in the way it operates. The helical engine uses ions, which are tiny particles, and accelerates them in a circular path. By altering the speed of these ions, the engine can change its movement. The concept is that by moving the ions along the axis of the engine, a force can be produced to propel a spacecraft forward. The uniqueness of the helical engine lies in its lack of moving parts, other than the ions moving in a closed path, which are trapped by electric and magnetic fields. The primary objective of the engine is to sustain satellites in orbit for extended periods without the need for refueling. However, its development is faced with several challenges, such as the need for materials that can withstand high temperatures and components that are efficient. Researchers are working towards using advanced materials, such as superconducting magnets, which were developed for the Large Hadron Collider. These materials would make the engine a reality. As David Burns puts it, the helical engine could be an interesting testbed for exploring the relationship of the conservation of momentum to mass, force, and to help develop helical engine. So what does this mean for us? It means that we'll have access to a whole new world of opportunities and experiences. We'll be able to explore the vast universe and learn more about our place in it. And who knows, maybe one day we will even have the chance to visit other planets and potentially start colonies there.